one of our members painted the picture that you see before you. Christ has risen. And there, there are so many things in the picture. It's, it's just kind of like Easter itself. You get overwhelmed with the emotion and the joy and, and the, the message, Christ is risen, he's risen indeed, alleluia, that it's easy to miss why did he die in the first place? Now, if you've been in church more than a week, you know, well, he died to take away the sins of the world, right? I mean, come on. We did bad things. We rebelled. We broke the rules. And God is holy. He is justified in his condemnations. The soul that sins shall die. My answer is no. 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 Jesus did not die because God just couldn't forgive us otherwise. There's a crime. There's a sinner must be punished. Think about it. Think deeply and carefully of what had been going on this whole time. The entire scriptures up to this point has been an elaborate system of forgiveness of sins through the substitute of an animal. The traveling tent that went with Moses and the people. They would bring their offerings for the sin of the people. They're established in Jerusalem. They would bring their lambs. They would bring their animals and their, and a substitute, the innocent for the guilty. Over and over and over throughout time, from the very beginning, Adam and Eve on, God has been declaring to sinful people, you are forgiven. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. I love you. And there we would hear the psalmist write, As far as the east is from the west, so has God removed our transgressions from us. Jesus died on the cross for something far more than the removal of your sins. As if far more than God is just so mad, he's not letting you into heaven, no matter what you believe, until that's dealt with. There was already a well-trodden and established path to heaven through the grace of God given to, Mo given to Abraham and his descendants, through the covenants given to Moses and the people of Israel. So certain was the resurrection, so clear-eyed was their hope that this God who has been gracious to them, that Job would say, though my skin is destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. David would write in his famous Psalm 23, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If you think the pictures of Revelation are wonderful and beautiful of the new heaven and the new earth. Keep in mind, it's a rephrasing and a retelling of what Isaiah already declared. So, if, if Jesus went to all this trouble, and, it, and it, we already had forgiveness of sins, and we already have a path to heaven, why on earth would God give his one and only son, Jesus, into death, even death on a cross? Well, the answer for why the cross and why only Jesus was put on public display this past week as a few men walked into an airport in Brussels and blew up tens of people, injured hundreds of people, and terrorized millions. There is an evil in every human heart 
that goes well beyond mere rule breaking. There is an evil inside of us that will not be removed simply by forgiving sinners their sins. There is an evil in us that goes well beyond educational fixes. As if you just knew better, you wouldn't do it. The evil inside of us goes well beyond willpower. As if, well, if we just tried a little harder, I'm sure we could do a little better. There is with inside each and every person you're sitting with, you're going home with, and in yourself. An evil that rages within us so much that if our opinion isn't honored, if our political stance isn't respected, if our parking spot is taken, Easter dresses and ties and suits cover up this evil very well until the ride home from church. How many families are ripped apart by the evil that is in us because an inheritance wasn't split out properly? How many congregations have splintered and gone their own way in an unloving heart, not because of doctrine, but because of carpet? There is an evil inside of us that, if put into the darkness, flourishes. If given permission, takes over a culture. If given encouragement, like on a college spring weekend. You see, it is the evil inside of us that fills our newspapers with horrors and our entertainment with filth. It is only Jesus. He has a very different kind of human heart than you or our I. His heart is pure and holy and good and right. So that when he looks on a woman, there is no evil lust or a man for that matter. There is no evil intent to use his wealth or his power as God to oppress the people. There is no evil retaliation simmering within him to get back at those who have abused him, made fun of him, put him down, slapped him, and crucified him. Of all humanity born of a woman, Jesus born of Mary and yet the true Son of God, he and he alone is the only one who can stand in the judgment of God and prevail. That the soul that sins dies, and so he goes into that judgment. And there publicly, on the cross, dies for the sins of the whole world. And then on the first day of the week, early in the morning, he did what only Jesus could do. He is alive. His human body, now alive. The tomb empty. Mary Magdalene grabbing hold of him. He has there provided the full and complete answer of why the cross. Because our hearts are evil and he and he alone can take us with him into the punishment of death and emerge on Easter morning with a new heart, a new life. And you, you personally, individually by name, have received this new life in the waters of your baptism where you died with Jesus, you were raised with Him in His resurrection. You see, you needed more than just a pardon you needed your God back with you. He dealt with the evil in your heart, a fatal blow. It's not that you can't sin anymore. Oh, our, our human body is poised and ready to sin. You don't have to teach yourself how to lie, right? You don't have to teach yourself how to have a hissy fit or a rage moment. It just happens. We're ready to do it. 
But you know what takes a lifetime of learning from the teacher as Mary Magdalene cried out? is how God has given you a new heart and a new life so that in your temptations that you and I all face, there is now a new possibility of love and grace and forgiveness. There is now a putting to death of the old and living in the new that Christ has made possible. You see, this brand new life then is an ongoing conversation with the teacher, the living Christ who is with you. Knowing this, take this Easter season and see if God, see if He won't really change your life with two very simple practices that in no way earn you salvation. Please, get over that. They're not, they're not way of earning anything. It's just wise. It's just the best way to live. Two practices that are grace-filled in which God will use so that you can be intimate, close, and dear, and have the resources of heaven and the resurrection available to you in your regular everyday life. Add at least these two practices of prayer and scripture reading. Now it's always so tempting to kind of make that the center. Well, I'm praying and I'm reading the scriptures. That's not the center. Christ is the center. Using these human practices to draw you ever closer into a resurrected life in which He is the King, in which He is the Lord, and His love prevails so much that it just it comes out of you naturally as easily as sin does. But now, love does. I invite you into this life. And if you don't have a Bible, take one. We've got some on a rack back here. We'll buy more. Start reading anywhere, but you could start with Matthew in the New Testament. First book of the New Testament. Jesus has risen. And now the teacher, the Lord, is with you. Amen. We stand.